Good morning, everyone. Thank you for your hospitality this morning. Thank you, Pastor Charlene, um, for having me. And um, I'm really excited to be here and to get to know you all a little more. I know we've been partnering for just about a year now, but I don't know you all very well and you don't know us. So this is a great opportunity um, for us to become even better friends. And you, you've heard what our mission is, and I just want to emphasize that the human connection part of our mission is really, really important to us. Um, we first and foremost work really hard to meet people where they are and to honor the dignity of our clients and respect their full humanness, right? Um, a lot of folks who are experiencing homelessness or who live on the street, um, they might feel invisible, right? Uh, there are lots of ways our communities and our neighbors don't fully respect our neighbors who experience homelessness, so we work really hard so that they know that they matter, um, and we work really hard to build relationships with them. I'm going to tell you a little bit about all of our programming today, and then I'm happy to stay for a few moments after worship to answer any questions you have, or just to chat and get to know you better and hear how things are going. As you heard, our two primary branches of service are housing and health care. All of our housing programs are for youth and young adults. Um, so all five programs serve young people, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about each program. We have the crib, which is our drop-in overnight shelter. It's open at 9 p.m., closes at 9 a.m. It's an emergency shelter, so young folks ages, four, ages 18 to 24 um, can come for one night at a time, anytime they need to. We also have a shelter called Open Door Shelter that's in West Town. Um, and this has 16 beds for youth ages 14 to 21. And this is kind of an interim program. So up to four months long, uh, we provide case management, work on life skills, and then work on getting young folks to a more stable housing situation, whether that's reconnecting with their family if it's safe to do so, or finding another permanent situation for them. We also have a program called Parenting with Purpose. And this is a transitional housing program. We have eight beds in this program, and it's for pregnant and parenting girls ages 16 to 21 and their children. We just went, over, uh, went through a big renovation um, in this program to our building, and the, the rooms look so great. They are so inviting um, to these girls and young women who are pregnant and parenting, and I'm really excited about how that turned out. Uh, this is a program that's up for up to two years, and also, again, including case management, life skills, um, connecting these young girls and women with whatever services they need. We have a program called Pathways. Uh, this is located in North Lawndale, and this is a transitional living program, meaning it is for young folks, 16 to 24, who are working, really working on those life skills, right? Learning how to be an adult, learning how to live on their own, whether it's learning how to cook, do laundry, get a bank account, all of those things that we do when we go off on our own. Um, and they can stay in our program again up to two years as we work to find, again, permanent housing for them. And then we have one more housing program that we don't run uh, completely, but we are a partner, and that is called the Youth Flexible Housing Pool. Um, and we have case managers that work with young people in this program, um, and clients are identified for this program through uh, frequent use of emergency systems, things like hospitals, emergency rooms, shelters. So we find young people who are using these programs, um, and we are the case managers as they get put into permanent housing. We also have health services, and that's what you all probably know most about. Um, the first being our health outreach bus, which goes to six different neighborhoods every week to provide care there. This is what you provide sandwiches for, right? So you bring those sandwiches to our health outreach bus. And our bus features a nurse, nurse's office, uh, where we provide free and accessible health care to folks. We provide food, provide a sense of community, any case management that folks want, and if folks want to get connected to housing, we can do that as well. We also now are providing these services at two different CTA train stops. 
at, at the station itself because a lot of our neighbors who experience homelessness, um, they sleep overnight on our trains that run for 24 hours. If they can't find another safe, accessible place to stay, um, that's where they sleep. So we go to the train stations to provide that same care for folks there. We also have a street medicine program, which is a little bit more mobile than our giant bus, as you can imagine. Uh, a giant, it's actually an RV that's uh, made into this mobile health unit. It's kind of hard to get through the streets of Chicago. Um, so our mobile health outreach unit called Street Medicine, um, they're visiting encampments, street corners, viaducts, anywhere people are living in a place that isn't made for human habitation, and they're providing health care, they're providing survival supplies, that case management, getting folks hooked up with housing, really anything folks need, um, they are providing that. Our street medicine team is really, really awesome. So we do have some ways to get involved. You all are already involved. We do have individual volunteers. We're kind of ushering uh, individual volunteers back in to our bus. We've kind of been up and down throughout the pandemic with that. And also, uh, in the before times, we would have groups come out to our bus and actually serve a meal there. Instead of just bringing us those sack meals, um, we actually would have folks come out and bring a hot meal and kind of serve it cafeteria style. So that's something that we will be getting back to. Uh, we still will do sack meals if that's what folks prefer, but we will also have the opportunity for people to actually serve a hot meal at the bus. And we also have groups come to serve a hot meal at our shelter, the crib, which is our drop-in overnight shelter. We're also always in need of in-kind donations, things like sleeping bags, hygiene kits. We do a lot of donations during the holidays. We give out stockings to all of our clients. So we uh, take large donations of those as well. And we really, really want to create uh, meaningful, mutually beneficial relationships with our congregational partners. Um, so if there are things you all think of, ideas you have, ways you want to partner, or if there are any ways we can support you um, with educational programs, anything like that, please let us know. Um, we don't want to be in a one-way transactional relationship with you, right? We want, um, we want to be friends. So please definitely reach out to me and let us know if there are other ways we can support you. I also wanted to let you know, we recently just created this uh, it's called the Good Neighbor Guide, and it, uh, it helps communities and individuals be better neighbors to people who are experiencing homelessness. So I'm going to leave some of these here for you. It's also available on our website, um, but it really, we are hoping to prepare and equip folks um, to engage our neighbors um, who are in our neighborhoods, right? Folks who are experiencing homelessness. So we hope that will be helpful. And I just want to finish up by giving you a few statistics um, so you know kind of can get a uh, quantitative idea of the work we are doing. Um, last year, we served 479 homeless young people and 51 of their children. The crib provided overnight shelter to 200 homeless youth and young adults who stayed a total of close to 5,000 nights. Our open door shelter served 105 young people who stayed a total of close to 3,000 nights. Our youth outreach team provided services, including case management, to 87 young people. For our health outreach, our staff made approximately 40,315 outreach contacts with people experiencing homelessness, those who are precariously housed, and medically vulnerable individuals. Nurse practitioners and volunteer physicians prevented 533 visits to the emergency room, saving the public health system approximately $330,000 in ER costs. And our street medicine team distributed over 12,000 sack lunches and over 6,000 hygiene kits. We did 2,473 free health assessments by our nurse practitioners and donors provided our health outreach with approximately 57,775 meals for our individual clients. Um, your meals really matter that you donate to us. We serve over 1,000 sack meals every week, and we've done some studies at our bus, and the majority of people who come to our bus um, to receive that free health care is the first meal that they've had that day. 
Um, so we really thank you all for your, the ways that you are um, supporting us, our work, and mostly our clients and your neighbors who are experiencing homelessness. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, thank you for having me. Um, thank you for who you are in the world, and I'm really excited for us to continue our partnership.